Hello and welcome to the 741 channel. Adam Stack has sent me their P7 portable laser engraver to check out and review, so that's what we're going to look at today. Now a couple things to get out of the way before I get started. First is that if you're interested in this machine, there will be some links in the description below that you can check out. The second thing I want to mention is that this video is not intended to take the place of the owner's manual. If you buy one of these things, make sure you read through any documentation supplied by Atomstack before you get started and work safely. These things can be dangerous. Now that that's out of the way, let's get this thing out of the box and check it out. So next, let's take a look at what comes in the box. First, we have a stainless steel plate to protect the work surface, a USB cable, a bag of hardware tools and other parts, AC mains cable, the AC power supply, the side rail with the control box. This piece is the Y-axis component. This is the laser module itself. And next is the X-axis component with laser mounting bracket. And then we have some plastic supports and then the other side rail. So I grabbed the manual that came with the machine and I'm gonna go through the instructions. Now if you prefer to look at this electronically, you can scan this QR code. It'll take you to the website where this is located. So the first step in the assembly process is to insert the y-axis component into the x-axis component. I've got the y-axis oriented so that the motor is on my left and facing down toward the table. I'm going to grab the x-axis and I'm going to engage these roller wheels into the grooves on the side of the y-axis. As I slide this together, I'm going to grab this connector and guide this wire through ahead of the rail. So next I'm going to grab three of the plastic blocks that were supplied with the kit. And I'm going to grab the assembly and I'm going to set the y-axis down on two of them. I want to make sure that this one is slid far enough over so it doesn't interfere with the motor drive. And then I'll grab this third one, turn it sideways, and put it under the x-axis. And again, I want to make sure that this one is seated down on the rail and not interfering with the screws underneath this end piece. So I'll double check and make sure that everything is level, square, and stable. And now I'll bring in the side rails and install these. I'll install the blank side rail on the left side of the y-axis where the motor is and the one with the control box on the right side. So I'll bring the side rail in. I'll line it up to these two holes that are in the extrusion. I'll make sure it's flat and resting on the table and square to the machine. And now I'll thread in these screws by hand to start. I'll use the supplied Allen wrench to get these just snugged up. I'm not going to tighten them fully just yet. So now I'll come over to the opposite side and install the arm with the control box on it. Before I do, I want to make sure that I get this wire harness that's in the end of the Y-axis kind of bent down and through the groove that's in the bottom of the extrusion and out of the way. So just like the other side, I'll bring in the arm, line up the holes, and start the screws. So now I'll double check and make sure that everything is square and flat to the table, and then use the Allen wrench to tighten everything up. So next up, I'm going to grab the contents of the Step 3 bag. So from the Step 3 bag, I'm going to grab one of the bearings and I'm going to drop it on the screw so that the wider part, or shoulder, is resting on the screw head like that. Then I'm going to bring the other bearing in, flip it around the opposite way so that the shoulder or wide part is facing up, and drop that one on the screw like that. And then I'm going to grab the spacer and drop that on top of the two bearings so that the screw assembly looks like this. So now I've got the machine tipped up on its side and I'm going to install the screw assembly with the bearings into this threaded hole that's just behind the control box. So now I'm going to grab the belt and I'm going to install it on the machine so that the toothed side of the belt engages with the tooth pulley on the motor. I'm going to start by grabbing one of the ends with the brass fitting on it and I'm going to insert it into the groove on this bracket that's closest to the bushing. So then I'll kind of work it around the bushing while putting a little bit of tension on it. Loop it around the bushing and then come back and work it around the motor pulley. Now I'm going to pull, put some tension on it and lock it into the other groove in the bracket. For step four, I'm going to grab the foam pads out of the step four and five bag. And I'll peel each of these off and stick one to each corner of the support legs. So now I'll grab the laser module, remove it from its bag, I'll slide it down into the mounting bracket, sliding these grooves that are on the back side of the laser frame 
into the ears on the mounting bracket. And then for now, I'll just pick a random spot and tighten up the thumb screw to hold it in place. So next up for step five, I'm gonna start connecting up the wire harnesses. The first action in step five is to connect this wire up to the motor drive, but on mine, that was already done. Next, I'm gonna grab the cable that was supplied in the step five bag, and I'm gonna connect one end up to this connector here on the control board. And then I'm gonna route the wire up behind the laser module and plug it into the connector on top. So next, I flipped the machine over again, and I'm gonna grab the seven pin cable and plug that into the bottom of the control board. And then I'm gonna grab the other connector on this wiring harness and plug it into this connector right here. And this one's just a little bit tricky because of this metal bracket that's here. And now I'll plug this connector that's coming from the control box into this one that is below the frame. But before I do that, I will mention that this connector, for whatever reason, was originally plugged into this socket right here. I pulled it out of there and I'm gonna plug it into here according to the instructions. Let's take a quick look at overall dimensions of the assembled machine. So it's a little over 16 inches at its widest point along the x-axis. Now side to side on the y-axis, it's just a hair over 15 inches. And the max height here to the top of the laser bracket looks like it's about five and three quarters inches off the surface of the table. Max engraving area of this machine is 200 millimeters by 200 millimeters, which is just a little bit under eight inches in both directions. So overall, this machine feels pretty sturdy and rugged. The two side rails are made out of steel and the Y and X axis rails are extruded aluminum. Now, when I first saw pictures of this machine, I was worried that maybe it would be a little unstable out here at the end. Now, of course, if I do push on it a little bit, it will flex, but with the weight of the laser out there at the end, I don't notice any deflection at all. Now, this machine is marketed as a 40 watt unit, but 40 watts is how much power the machine uses overall. The laser module itself is a five watt nominal laser. Now the laser diode itself is inside this laser housing, but there is a nice glass UV protective window right here, so you kind of can see the beam. Now Atomstack did not include any laser safety glasses with this machine. Now even though this UV protective window does a pretty good job, there is still some bright laser light that will escape from below the surface here, so it is a good idea to get a pair of these and wear them when using this machine. So next, I'm gonna bring this over to the computer, hook it up, and try it out. But before I do that, I wanna mention a couple of things. Now, the first thing I'll mention is that I'm still a relative noob when it comes to all this laser engraving stuff. So I'm not gonna show anything too complicated here. I'll just do a few basic tasks here to show you guys how the machine works. The second thing I'll mention is that for this demonstration, I'm going to use the free open source software Laser Gerbil, and I'll leave a link down below in case you want to download it. Now, there are other laser programs that will work well with this machine, the most popular being Lightburn. But again, I'm going to stick with Laser Gerbil for this demonstration. So I've got the machine over here on my table close to my computer. I've got the USB cable connected up, and I've got the power cable connected up over here to the control box. You can also see that down here on the table, I've got the stainless steel plate that was supplied with the machine on top of the table to protect it. So to start off with the demo, I'm gonna take this piece of cardstock and I'm going to engrave one of my wife's pencil drawings onto it. And then I'll cut it out of the frame. So I put the cardstock on top of the stainless steel plate and I'm just gonna add a little tape to the corners to keep it from moving. And one thing I forgot to mention before is that this machine doesn't have any safety stops. So you have to be a little bit careful with this machine when picking a start position and using it with the software. Otherwise, it can crash into the limits and then the motors and belts will kind of slip and grind. So right now I've got everything in the lower left corner and I'm gonna move it up and away from that just a little bit. Now because this machine is a fixed focus laser, the next thing I need to do is set the height of the laser head. So I'm gonna grab this two millimeter thick piece of acrylic that came with the machine and I'm just gonna put it underneath the laser head. I'll loosen it up, drop it down until it's just resting on the acrylic and then tighten it up. And now everything should be good to go. Now I can turn the machine on and we can head over to Laser Gerbil and load up a file. And one last thing to mention before I head over to Laser Gerbil and load a file, I like to have a fire extinguisher handy just in case things get out of hand. So I've got Laser Gerbil started up and the first thing I need to do is connect up to the machine. I'm gonna switch over to COM7 and then I'll hit the connect button. 
So I've already set the home position for the machine. So now I'm going to load the file I want to engrave. I'm not going to spend too much time going through these settings, but these are the settings that I found work best with this image at this size. So now I'll hit the next button to go to the second page. And again, I'm not going to go through these settings too much because they vary from material to material, but this is what's working best for this image. Now I'll click create and our image is ready to go. So here's a look at some samples that I engraved on the cardstock. You can see that each one had a little bit different settings with this one coming out the best. Now the one thing I also need to mention is that the original image is 8 by 10. So when I scale it down we're going to lose some detail naturally because of that. So this is probably as close as I'm going to get with this size image. Now one thing I want to point out is especially in these images up here you can see some horizontal banding. And on this one you can kind of see some weird artifacts. And the reason for that is because my Y-axis belt was a little bit loose. I tightened it up and those artifacts are gone on this image. The next thing I think I'm going to do is try and cut something out of this 2 millimeter wood stock that I have. What I think I'm going to do now is go over to Thingiverse and see if I can find an STL file for a ham radio antenna winder. Now of course an STL file is meant for 3D printers, but I should be able to convert that over to an SVG or vector file that should work with laser gerbil and the Atom stack. Let's see if we can do it. So here's a look at the prototype that I cut out of the cardstock. Everything looks like it came out pretty good and it seems to fit well on my stock. So let's go set it up on the machine and see if we can cut through this material. So next, I want to set up my piece to cut. Now I want to elevate this a little bit above the backing plate so that when the laser cuts through it, it actually goes through the material and doesn't hit the stainless steel plate and kind of reflect and bounce back so that the backside doesn't burn. Now a lot of people will use a honeycomb plate under their material to serve that purpose. Now I don't have one of those plates, but I do have a bunch of spare nuts laying around. So I've just kind of scattered them randomly on my stainless steel plate. And I'm going to bring my material in and place it down on top. Now because the material is a little bit warped and to make sure that it doesn't move while the laser is cutting, I'm going to lightly tape down the edges. I'm just going to put these on tight enough so that it holds the material in place as the laser moves around. I had my laser raised up while I was playing with the material here, so now I'm going to bring it back down and focus it using my focus plate as a guide. Now I can move that out of the way, turn the machine on, load the file up, and start cutting. So it took about six passes to get more or less through the wood probably could have went one, one more pass and I wouldn't have to punch these out by hand. I probably could have got away with less passes. I'm not sure if you guys can tell there, but it looks like the material moved a little bit as it was cutting. So I need to find a little bit better way than that blue tape to hold my material as I'm cutting. So this worked out pretty well, but for real life applications, I wouldn't make an antenna winder out of basswood or plywood or whatever this is probably want to use something like acrylic. Now at the moment, the only acrylic that I have that I can cut are these little pieces that Atom Stack sent as samples with the machine. So let's put something a little bit smaller on one of these and see if it can cut it. And if it can cut it, I'll probably order some bigger sheets of material so I can cut some real antenna winders. Now I realize this is pretty small and I didn't end up getting any footage while the machine was actually cutting, but you can see I was able to scribe in my 741 logo here. I think over on this side, this is three passes. I ended up going up to 10 passes and I was able to cut cleanly right through the acrylic. And here's a closer look at what actually got cut out. The circle itself is 15 millimeters in diameter, so the letters inside are even smaller and you can see that they cut pretty cleanly. I'm pretty impressed with the detail that this was able to achieve. So overall, I'm pretty happy with the P7. I think this is a great machine for somebody just getting started with laser engraving or someone that might need a smaller machine to fit a smaller area. This machine is also small enough and rugged enough to be portable 
if you needed to kind of bring it around places. The only real drawback with this machine is maybe its size. If you need to work with bigger material, then you're going to need a bigger machine. But probably for most applications, this would work. So if you do want to learn more about this machine, I will leave affiliate links in the description below. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. Thanks for watching.